Hey, CGS investors, it's Monday, May 6th. Taking a look at the charts, uh, we're starting to get a little bit of uh, traction here in the markets in terms of we could be getting close to another buy signal for the SP500, possibly the NASDAQ as well. Uh, we'll see which one or if any of them trigger here in the next um, couple of sessions. But overall, if we take a look at the the big picture here, the um, the daily chart, we can see we've had a, uh, a nice strong pop in the last few days. Now, Apple is a big chunk of this. Um, but overall, we are seeing the momentum shift to the upside. We can also see in our 30 minute chart here, we've gone from red bars and uh, we've got orange bars telling us that that momentum is shifting from down to neutral. And after neutral, we generally get green bars, which is a new uptrend. So definitely starting to see this market get pushed. There's no doubt, though, it has had a very strong pop over the past three or four sessions. It is right up into resistance into these highs. Uh, these lows and the breakdown area. Uh, but overall, uh, this market is showing some signs of strength. Today, we did see the small caps, the Russell 2000, uh, post some pretty pretty decent gains, up about 1.3%. And uh, we ended up seeing the SP500 up a percent, the NASDAQ up 1.10%, uh, uh, really starting to muscle its way up. So we are seeing life come back. If we take a look at the VIX, uh, fear is uh, really kind of dropping fairly quickly. We talked about it when it was way up here. Typically, we see the market put in a bottom when it, when it uh, has this huge move and these big gaps, uh, big spikes. And then, of course, it should fade and, and fizzle back out and, and potentially put in a bottom uh, in the stock market. And so now we're seeing that come down. People aren't very nervous, which I do feel like the market could have a little bit of a pullback here. But again, uh, if we kick back into an uptrend, uh, the market can just keep going up for months. That's what we saw with the SP 500 um, last November. We got long and it just lasted um, for a month after month after month and uh, locked in some nice gains. So it doesn't really matter too much. But what the VIX does, uh, if we take a look at the put call ratio, which I don't cover too much with this, it's uh, fairly um, more or less. It's just telling us we've got neutral territory. There was a lot of people buying put options. Um, I like to look at the 50 day move or the five day moving average, which is this little blue line you can kind of see in the background when that is above the 50 day moving average, which is the thicker blue line. Uh, typically, the market is a little uh, fearful and uh, usually we should be looking for some type of bottom once we start to see uh, that five day moving average start to get below the, the 50 day. It just seems to be what works with the uh, the put call ratio in terms of the waves and cycles at play uh, with people in the options uh, market. Uh, so overall, we are starting to see uh, that come down and we're not seeing as many people buy put options. So the, the kind of panic has has fizzled out, as we saw with the, the VIX. Now, overall, if we take a look over at the bond market, we've got bonds uh, up about four tenths of a percent this morning, having a little bit of a bounce. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, they are in a downtrend. Uh, if we look at the 30 minute chart, you can see they've had a pretty strong pop. They have this red shading in the background that's telling us that it's it's kind of stretched. It's overbought in a downtrend. Sellers should uh, naturally want to be stepping in here and um, and selling off in here. This is usually when we start to see a pullback. Uh, we'll look at the big picture of bonds clearly in a downtrend, uh, trying to work out itself along a, a bottom here. And uh, a lot of people trying to pick a bottom. You can see the volume. Typically, uh, that is a fairly good sign that uh, it's not going to be the bottom because everybody's buying it, expecting it to be the bottom. So usually they're going to get burned. And that means we could easily see this market uh, continue to fade out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, continue to drift down and make a lower low, break this low. And uh, this is when people will start to panic. And, and then it could probably put in some type of bottom. And maybe we go into a very big rally. I do think there's a lot of potential in bonds. Uh, those who have been in bonds and never got out have taken a huge beating uh, in pricing, losing 40 or so percent of your value. I do believe there's a huge move percentage wise back up. Um, which is great for people buying in down here. When we get into a bottom and a new trigger, we should have some pretty good upside. But uh, for anybody holding them, it is just really you're clawing your way back, trying to recoup some of what you lost. And uh, that's a frustrating thing with uh, using an old strategy that really just goes on bonds are safe and you know um, stocks are risky. Um, they don't factor in the interest rates. They don't factor in the trend. Really, you don't even need to know what the interest rates are doing to trade bonds. All you need to know is trend analysis. If it's trending up, we want to be long. If it's trending down, you don't want to hold them. 
Uh, so it can be really simple. And that's what we do here with the technical traders and CGS. We follow price. We don't really care what the news is. Uh, I definitely don't care what the news is. We just want to know, is the trend moving up? Is it strong enough for us to get involved? And um, if not, we go to something else that is safer and that meets our criteria uh, to hold our cash. Um, let's go take a look at the long-term picture here of, um, of the market. So this is the weekly chart of the SP 500. Again, it has uh, had a pretty good pullback over the past uh, four or five weeks. It's starting to extend. This, this could easily roll over and continue to sell off. It could also just continue to muscle its way higher and rally for another month or three or into November elections. We, we, nobody knows. Um, last year, the market kind of topped out November, December. Um, so for all we know, we're going to see a very similar move uh, pullback, just like we had kind of in a similar time frame last year and or not last year, two years ago. And it rallied up into kind of that November, December and then went into a pullback. So maybe we're going to see that again because we just had a very similar pullback. Um, if we look at the overall trend of the markets here and we look at how the CGS strategy in the lower chart plays out with these trends, keep in mind we've got um, we've got a bullish rising tide and then we have a bearish tide or a going out tide and then we've got a rising tide. And of course, during a rising tide, we get nice long trends. We can make a lot of money. During a falling tide, it is more so defensive. We're protecting capital and uh, moving into different assets like the dollar or bonds, uh, or not or potentially bonds if they're favorable, uh, the dollar and bill, which is uh, the cash position. And then we're back into a bullish environment where we've caught a few very nice trades, pushing our accounts to new all-time highs every every few uh, weeks or every couple of months at least. Right now we are in a consolidation phase. Market's trying to figure itself out if it is going to push higher and give us a new trigger or not. So if we go back and take a look at the SP500 CGS strategy, um, the setup that we have right here is actually a very similar setup right here as it was right over here. Um, we had a very similar type of setup on the chart, both for the SP500 and the NASDAQ. Now, the SP500 held its ground, kept its technicals, and just kept us in the trade uh, for one nice solid trade. The NASDAQ, on the other hand, uh, did throw an exit signal uh, and then it eventually got us back in and then the market continued to go up to hit some more targets. Um, and so that's kind of where we are. This this type of setup, uh, very similar to this right here. So it'll be interesting to see how this market resets um, and, if, and if we do start to break and push to some new highs as we go into the elections. And uh, I don't take I don't put much weighting into the elections and all that stuff. There are cycles at play. People swear by the markets. The president's going to run the markets higher into elections. So they win. Who knows? I don't get into that stuff. All that conspiracy stuff and, and thoughts uh, are a great way to get really confused and second guess yourself. But um, uh, markets are close to potentially kicking back into a, a new buy signal. And we could have another leg higher, which could be pretty exciting. Um, let's go take a look at some other plays here. We do have utilities XLU. It has, let me zoom in a bit here. It has been on a tear the past month. It's really leading the way, muscling itself up, outperforming the SP 500, the NASDAQ, small caps. Um, this is a little bit of a red flag. Typically when we see the, um, utilities do really well, the market tends to want to pull back. Uh, so we have some very big mixed signals here. Um, of what the market is telling us. But uh, this one little play here is a little bit of a, a red flag, a warning sign. But again, if the markets give us a buy signal and the strength and momentum's in play, we will get long. It doesn't really matter um, so much what utilities are doing. Um, the other thing to look at here, let's take a look over at precious metals. Now, they had a nice run on Monday, today. They were up about 1% for gold, about... Um, uh, three and a half percent for silver. So pretty nice pop. Let's take a look at silver real quick here. You can see SLV, a really strong pop to the upside. In the in the grand scheme of things, gold, silver, and miners have all had their 100% measured moves, meaning they had their first rally, their pullback, they hit their second target. Then they put in a topping volatility phase, and now they're all pulling back, consolidating, uh, which could make for a bigger move. Meaning if we were to look at the bigger picture, 
we could argue depending where we want to pick the lows here it's got it's um it's got a leg up it's got a bull flag pattern it's first pullback and then it would have another leg that goes much much higher uh, so that can be the same for gold if we take a look at gold same type of thing if we just go out here we've got um potential here for the first leg up for a significant pause and then it could go and have another run and take us up to that 26 2700 dollars uh, target which is what we've been talking about for really the past six eight twelve months of what the chart not only this chart pattern this chart pattern is new but which points to 2650 but the long-term monthly chart also points to 2650 uh, which is why we've had that target for a long time that gold may want to get there before the bear market in equities and before gold potentially has a much bigger pullback uh, let's take a look at gold from the monthly standpoint real quick and if we were to look at this standpoint, um, let's let's do a Fibonacci extension. We can take the low here, take the high, and this low carry it forward. We can see here 2650 is the upside move for gold, and we could very easily see gold have this run up, and which means silver and miners will most likely rally as well. Uh, and then the stock market tops out. Uh, the stock market could actually top out at any point. Gold has a tendency to keep moving higher even when the stocks start to top and, and stop going up and even start to sell off. But once the bear market hits a stage four decline, gold will start to struggle and it'll start to get pulled down with the selling pressure, the fear, forced liquidation, margin calls, all of those things. Uh, and it'll wipe out a good chunk of this move. And then at some point, whenever that is, uh, later this year or next year, um, gold will put in a bottom, probably before the stock market. And then I think gold will be off to the races to 35, 3600 plus uh, and start a multi-year uh, run. So if we were to just um, recalibrate this chart real quick and go back, I've covered this all many, many times, but I know we have a lot of new followers. Uh, more or less, we have a multi-year consolidation. Right now, we're having a run up into, I think, the, st the stock market top. And uh, if we go back here, back in the previous super cycle stage, we had a multi-year consolidation. And then we had a run up into the 2007, 2008 top. Gold pulled, took off, and then gold sold off 34%. Bottomed before the stock market put in a bottom a few months before, and then it rallied for years and skyrocketed. So this right here would be something like this right here. And this run up that we're seeing that we saw going into the, the beginning of a recession and a financial crisis is this run up that we are seeing right now. So yes, there is more upside potential. Yes, there is downside potential and could give back all of those gains. At some point, I believe there'll be a good opportunity probably after this volatility hump that it'll be a multi-year rally. Um, and be the opportunity to get into gold miners and, um, uh, for huge explosive gains, which I will let you know when I'm excited about those, but I'm not excited about them uh, yet. Gold miners are still underperforming. So are silver miners. They've had a rally in the last little bit, uh, the last three months. But overall, they're not making new all-time highs like gold. They are lagging uh, dramatically. Um, they're just not, we're not in that market condition for ideally penny gold stocks to go from you know 15 50 or 50 cents to you know five ten bucks uh those type of moves that i think is probably next year sometime or maybe even later depending how long this bear market drags out um, once it does start all right let's take a look at uh gold sorry black gold crude oil i think i said that this morning in the band video um black gold crude oil if we take a look here it really is just flagging sideways. I think there is potential for oil to um, potentially run higher, uh, depending on how things unfold. We could see gold and, and oil both move up and higher, but overall gold, sorry, oil is kind of consolidating in a pretty big sideways range uh, through here. And um, I'm not, I don't see any real good, clear opportunities for it. It, uh, is trying to figure out if it is going to start a new rally. Now, this is the monthly chart. If we take a look at the daily chart, we can see it has had a ABC correction, a three wave to the downside. Um, it is kind of getting down into a support level. If we take uh, crude oil, you can see we had this, this uh, resistance here, resistance uh, ate through that resistance and then finally broke free 
is now coming back down. So we'll see if it finds traction. There is potential. Whoops. We could see oil uh, find some traction here and maybe it wants to rally uh, with gold over the next um, couple of months. Uh, we'll see what kind of tensions rise. If there's more war things going on, we could see oil move up typically during difficult times. Um, and when wars expand, both gold and oil do well. So we'll see how all that unfolds. Um, other than that, um, that's kind of about it at this point. We'll see how the markets unfold going forward. And we may have a buy signal this week. I will keep you posted and we'll go from there. Talk soon. Bye-bye.